All right, so let's get into this. Let's see what what is it that makes Zoom so popular, right? So today we're going to look into the basics of Zoom security. These are the things that I think these these top five tips are going to make your Zoom conferencing so much more secure, right? So uh, we know it's exploded. There's been an explosion since this uh, pandemic has hit us and a lot of people are working from home. So there's been rapid growth, right? And the rapid growth has been uh, partially because Zoom is just easy to use. It's a really easy platform to use. Um, it gives you this nice video grid uh, where you can see all the, well, a lot of your participants. Uh, you can set it up to be up to 49 participants showing up on a screen at a time. Uh, incredible. We, we didn't see that with things like uh, GoToMeeting or WebEx or anything like that. And it's got a little bit of luck. So there's a little bit of luck in this. But what happened, Zoom went from 10 million users in December to over 200 million users in March. And that's daily users, people on the platform each and every day. Um, so it did, it did cause some problems. One of the things that we've seen that's, that's huge, that's really impacting Zoom users a lot, is this thing called Zoom bombing, right? And that's where people that aren't supposed to show up to your meeting show up to your meeting and, and do crazy things. We've seen uh, things like uh, folks would go into an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting and shout derogatory things and talk about liquor, and um, they'd go into other meetings that were uh, closed uh, should have been closed, uh, like school meetings, meetings about uh, classrooms and, and high schools and educational uh, institutions, they'd show up and just try to ruin the meeting. And really on places like 4chan and, and, and things like that, there's people that will set up Zoom bombing. So maybe you're a high school student that doesn't want to attend class that day, you can go to like one of these places like 4chan and post your meeting link to that channel and folks will come and make it so that the meeting can't happen right they they will throw derogatory terms in maybe you know curse words all, all kind of stuff just to derail the meeting or, or get it to to stop from happening right so what we really want to do is we want to uh protect from that right so these are my five basic tips for Zoom security. And obviously there's there's a, a ton of other things we can do. Zoom is not the most locked down system. So it's not going to be the system you want to use if say you're hosting Department of Defense secrets or trade secrets or secrets about your company. Uh, you probably don't want to do that because the way that Zoom is set up, you know, it'll tell you stuff like it has encryption. It does have encryption. So it has encryption from your browser or your user's browser to Zoom headquarters and then it's decrypted there. And that has to happen because of the technology to, to put the, all the pictures up on a screen and to do the things that Zoom does, it has to be decrypted at Zoom and then it can get re-encrypted and sent back to the other side. So it's sent to the users or sent to you. So it's important that we know that there are five basic tips that can secure Zoom more than it is out of the box. It's not going to be perfect, right? It's not going to be locked down to to where you maybe want to put your company secrets there, or you you know national secrets. So we don't want to put uh, government secrets there. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at you know how to set this up, right? So if we go into Zoom, and, and we're going to set up a meeting. So if we go in and we're going to use these these five principles uh, to set up a meeting. So we schedule our meeting. Want to change the name to whatever. The meeting's going to be that makes sense. Um, set our date and time, how long it's going to last from and to. And remember that the private account is going to give you about 40 minutes of time. Um, the the pro, the first paid account level, uh, will give you like 24 hours of recording time. Educators, if you're like a school working for a school or something like that, uh, they've got a deal now where you can get the pro version for free. So things we want to do, if we look back at our list here, we want to have set and use a complex meeting password we want to enable the waiting room we want to allow join from browser and we want to lock the meeting and then finally we want to automatically record the meeting and most of this we can do right from this initial zoom screen right first thing we want to do 
is we want to make sure that we're using the automatically generated meeting ID. And you'll see on the screen, uh, my personal ID is there. That's not by mistake. As soon as this meeting is over, I'm gonna go in and change that. Don't, don't fret there. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wa want to require a meeting password. And by default, if you don't go in and change any of the admin settings, it's gonna be this six character numeric password we can always go in and change that. And what we want to change it to is a strong password. It can be 10 characters, and it can be uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. And that's what we want to do. We, uh, you know, I'll make a random one. So we want it to be 10 characters long. We want it to be uppercase, lowercase, numeric, and special character. That's going to make it more secure. The other things, you know, do you want your participants and the host to have their videos on? Most of the time you are, and that's not really a security setting. Um, we will join from telephone and computer. I normally do that. Again, not a security setting, but we want to go down into the advanced options here. We want to enable the waiting room, and that's important because when we, and when we do this, that means that the people that join the meeting don't just jump into the meeting. They go into a special contained area, and the host of the meeting has to look at them and say, are they supposed to be there? And if they're supposed to be there, then the host can allow them into the meeting. And this helps reduce that that Zoom bombing, because when people get that passcode, they're not going to get right into the meeting. When they join the meeting, they'll put in, be put into this waiting room, and then the host will allow those people they know are supposed to be there. So if it's a classroom and you have 10 students and you know them by name, you'll, you'll see them, you'll allow them in. If that weird person comes in from 4chan or something like that, you can just not allow them in. Mute participants and entry, that makes sense. You just want to not have people coming in with their their audio crazy loud and dogs barking in the background and stuff. Uh, the user can unmute themselves from their end as well. I recommend also one of my tips is to automatically record the meeting that's locally or in the cloud because now it is a federal offense to do this Zoom bombing. What you want to do is have some kind of proof after the fact if somebody does get by all these security measures and they get into your, your meeting still, you'll have some kind of proof to turn over to law enforcement folks if you need to. So. Um, automatically record it, short, store it locally. If, if you don't need it, delete it, get rid of it. Or you can, uh, if you have the ability, you can also store it in the cloud. You may wonder about this authenticate, only authenticated users can join. That's good, but it, right now it's set up to require those folks to have a Zoom account. And I don't know that you want all of your users to have to go in and get a Zoom account. I don't know that that's, that's the right thing to do. So I, I, it would be nice, and I haven't seen how to do it, if it could authenticate with Facebook or a, 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 another service, Google or something like that. Right now, it doesn't. And the only thing we really left, left off is the ability to join from a browser. And joining from a browser is really for your end users, to help them out. So when we join from a browser, that's actually in the, the web setting. And we go into the web settings. Here's where we can enable the waiting, waiting room. And if you have the paid account, you can have a customized waiting room with your logo and everything on it. So you can have all participants go into the waiting room or you can have guest participants only. I say, you know, throw all of your all of your participants in the waiting room. That way you have control over bringing people into the meeting. And then the other one is show join from your browser link. I, I like to turn this on because from the other side, when you're joining a Zoom meeting, you may not want to install the application, right? That's gonna be another thing you have to manage that you have to take care of on your, your side. So, And some people just don't wanna create a Zoom account. So this allows people to join from their browser without creating a Zoom account, without downloading and installing the Zoom app. And I think it's more security for your end users. It really doesn't do anything for you. And the last thing, the bonus thing that's on our list for today is make sure that you're keeping the Zoom application if you've got it updated. The thing about Zoom is when it was released, it went from you know a small user base to this giant user base. Security was kind of lacking. It was kind of behind on security. So they have made strides, they being Zoom, have made strides to increase the security and they keep adding security. So they're not adding any more features to Zoom. What they're doing is spending this time making it more secure. So you're going to want to make sure, like any other application, you keep it updated. All you have to do is uh, click your profile in the top. And if we were scheduling this, we hit schedule. I'm just going to cancel this. But you want to make sure that, that you're keeping your application up to date. We go into your profile at the top up here on the top right, check for updates, 
and just make sure you're up to date. If there's a new update, install it and get back to work. So that, you know, that's the rundown. That's the, the quick and dirty of Zoom security. If you do those five, I guess we've got a bonus because you do want to keep all your applications updated. So we did get a bonus. Uh, do those five things. Make sure you're, that you're secure in the way you're doing your Zoom meetings, uh, and it'll be a, a great tool. Again, like anything else, there's a balance of security and usability. So we can make it secure, and, and we can have it usable. It's a very usable tool. A ton of people are using it, uh, using it all over the place right now. So let's just be smart when we do it. Do these, you know, five or six really easy things, and uh, it'll work out for us. So. As always, I'm Jim with your morning cup of cyber. A little bit of a rough Monday start, but that's okay. You guys be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.